that what you saw that Thursday, Friday, and the following Monday is a precursor of what's to come. It basically opened up the door uh, to the system completely being margin called. And that's, that's what we're gonna face over the next few months is a giant margin call that cannot be met. If since 2020, you sold 5% uh, of your gold along the way to live on, you'd still have a, a bunch of gold left. And you're, uh, I mean, you, you'd have, you'd have more in dollars today than you would have had back in 2020 because gold has gone up faster than you are taking out 5%. And I personally use silver as a bank account. I vault it. I mean, if I get a, a big check or whatever, I buy silver. Whether it goes up or down or goes sideways or whatever, I don't care. If I need a chunk of money, I'll liquidate it. But I know that I cannot wake up tomorrow morning and my metal's gone. It's, it's bankrupt because you can't go bankrupt. Gold and silver are wealth. Gold and silver are money themselves. In today's news recap, analysts predicts silver prices could reach $200 driven by demand for new EV battery technology. A financial expert with over a decade of experience in commodities markets has predicted that silver could reach $200 per ounce in the next 10 to 15 years. Riding the wave of increased demand for a new EV battery technology developed by Samsung. According to Bambro, the new batteries may require one kilo of silver per car, driving silver usage sky high. Bambro believes that the precious metal will be able to reach $200 per ounce prices, supported by the emergence of a revolutionary new electric vehicle battery technology that uses silver in its structure. The new solid state batteries developed by Samsung feature a silver carbon composite layer for the anode, allowing them to have an increased life, dramatically reduced charging times, and larger operating longevity. According to his estimates, each battery cell might require up to five grams of silver, putting the whole requirement for an average car battery at one kilogos. Bambro assesses that if only 20% of the yearly global car market adopts this kind of battery, 16 million EVs, it would increase silver demand sky high. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button, hit the like button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. If the system down, what is it exactly that you're gonna buy? I mean, are you gonna go to your local grocery store or Walmart or the gas station? or you think you're gonna go out to a Friday night dinner, good luck, everything's gonna be closed. There won't be anything. I mean, think about when a hurricane comes, your grocery store is wiped out in three days because there's not little elves in the back room baking loaves of bread and canning baked beans for you. Um, so they're gonna be empty. The, the whole idea behind gold is it transfers your wealth from the current system into the next system and because everything's going to be reset, you're going to end up having relatively more capital in purchasing power terms. Um, I mean, you can go out and you can cut a deal with somebody. I'll give you 100 ounces of gold for your house. And I mean, they can be done. You can do that today. But you're doing it on a one to one basis. It's not like you're going to be able to walk into a grocery store, you know, with junk silver and use it. But you sure as hell are going to be able to go to a farmer assuming you live rural if you live in a city well good luck to you there i mean there is no hope if you live in a city you're gonna perish when this goes down but if you're living rural and you can find a farmer that's got eggs or pigs or cows or whatever they will accept junk silver i mean i've gone to plenty of farmers markets talk to farmers and ask them you know when things go bad will you accept junk silver and Nine out of 10 will say, I'd rather take junk silver right now. I would say buy uh, gold maple leaves. And if you can find Canadian junk, which is very, very hard to find, you would want that. Uh, your next best would be uh, Canadian maple leaves. As an American, you want the coin of the realm. You want uh, gold eagles or pre-1933 gold. And in silver, as it stands right now, for what possible reason would you buy any any 
other form of silver right now because junk is basically the same price as bars or generic coin or whatever. A year ago, there was a $10 premium. So the premiums have evaporated. You're buying silver in basically its cheapest form. And by far and away, the form of junk is the absolute best form for an American to own. It's the smallest denomination. It can't be counterfeited. It's readily recognizable. And, and it's U.S. Mint lineage. I mean, junk is the absolute best form for an, America, uh, for an American to own. And I don't know if I'm the largest broker in the country uh, with, with junk silver on the books, but I'm definitely one of the 10 largest brokers in the country uh, as far as getting junk silver in customers' hands. Because that's really all I've done since, uh, I'm going to say, 2017. And other than IRA accounts where you've got to do something that's 99.9, in which case I've done silver. Uh, I mean, yeah, have I done a, a few bars or generics because, you know, people are jumping up and down. No, I don't want junk. I want the crappy bars. I want the crappy generics. Um, those are not going to trade. You will not be able to bar, barter with a generic coin or a bar when this thing goes down because the other side of the transaction is going to look at it and say, how do I know this is real? Because they're easily counterfeitable. Junk, you cannot counterfeit. If you had a counterfeit dime or a quarter, they, you know, brand new, they'd be shiny. And if somebody wants to give you a shiny 1937 dime, run away from it because there's no way in hell that that's a real dime or quarter or whatever. It has to show where. In today's news recap, Bank of America expects declining silver inventories to make the deficits count. The Silver Institute shows that the silver market has been in a deficit for the last five years. And during that time, we've seen substantial decreases in global inventories. Which makes sense, as uh, the metal has to come from somewhere to meet the shortfall. Yet, with no resolution to the gap in sight, as the deficits are widely expected to continue years into the future, a recent Bank of America report suggests that the declining inventories are starting to make the deficits count. Their report also commented on China's surging silver consumption, which has continued to grow in 2024 as their solar production has, again, exceeded expectations. And with governments calling for a tripling of green energy by 2030, the demand for silver is going to have to increase if the governments are going to get anywhere even close to meeting their targets. China has already shifted to being a net importer of silver. And we've personally talked with one of the larger silver producers who told us about how Chinese smelters have been going directly to Latin American silver producers and offering substantial Financially reduced treatment charges because they're able to take advantage of the increased premiums in China. Now we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. As the title to a, a car or a truck or the deed to a house, it's proof of your ownership. Um, when the system goes down, your shares, I mean, your stock may go down, it may go up, who knows. Um, but when the system goes down and all these get bailed in, unless somebody comes to your house and steals your certificate, you have it. You have proof of ownership. And you're going to be able to present that at a later date and say, these are my shares. I'd like to sell them or do whatever you want with them. Um, I'm going to go over this on how to do it because I, I get bombarded after I talk about this with, well, should I do this? Should I do that? How do I do it? I'm going to tell you how to do it now. Please don't email me because I'm, I'm not going to respond because I'd have to respond, you know, 50 or 100 times after every interview. So what you do is you tell your broker that you want your shares to be sent to the transfer agent under DRS that stands for direct registration and what happens is 
it's the shares are no longer electronically held at your broker. They're electronically held at the transfer agent. There's no fee to do that. Um, if you tell your broker outright, I just want you to send me the certificate, they'll probably push back because, again, your shares are already lent out. And they realize you're going to have to go get those shares in order to give you your shares back. So, and, and they'll charge you 500 bucks to do it, and it'll take forever and ever to get done. So, tell your broker you want to transfer your shares to the transfer agent. That should take two or three days to get done. Once it's electronically held at the transfer agent, and you're going to have to call your company, uh, you know, whatever uh, stock the, the, the company that you own, you need to call the company and ask them, who is your transfer agent? So once it gets transferred, you call that transfer agent directly and you tell them, I have X amount of shares of XYZ stock that you're now holding. It just arrived a couple days ago. I would like a certificate. And what they'll do, uh, you, I mean, there, there is paperwork. They will uh, have you fill out the paperwork that needs to be filled out. And generally, you're talking, I don't know, now it's, it's probably up to $25 to get a certificate. But they will physically send you a stock certificate. Your, your shares will no longer be at the broker. Your shares will no longer be at the transfer agent. The shares will be in your hands. Don't lose your shares. Um, and I actually did uh, lose a few shares uh, when my house burned down back in 2011. I got the majority of them out. There were a few straggling shares. But whatever, uh, if you lose them, they, they got stolen, they got burned up or whatever, you're going to have to pay a 3 to 4% surety bond fee to get those replaced. And that's a nightmare. But the move from your broker holding your stock, moving it to the transfer agent under DRS, and then having the certificate sent out to you should take no more than two or three weeks time to do. It's It still can be done. Uh, they, the, your broker will make it more difficult. Because your broker will say, what are you, crazy? Nobody does that. Well, you got to protect yourself. Nobody's going to protect you. And the reason they're giving you pushback is they've already let your shares out. That's why. What do you think of Bill Holter's take? Is he spot on or do you disagree with him? Do you think the U.S. economy will be just fine as usual? Or is there a major recession coming very soon? Post in the comments section down below your honest opinion. Subscribe if you've not yet done so. And peep this video right here because you'll love it. I'll see you on the other side.